Hi, everybody. This is Sherry Leopold with Outside the Box with Sherry, and it is my distinct honor and pleasure to be here with you on New Year's Eve. And wow, what a year it has been. And I have a very special guest with me here today, and her name is Sharon Jameson. Welcome to Outside the Box with Sherry, Sharon. Well, I am so grateful to be here, and you look absolutely gorgeous, Sherry. So I'm so happy to be in your presence today. Oh, thank you so much. Now, I've known you for several years, uh, and I know exactly who you are, and I love every part of you, but I'm going to have you share with our viewers a little bit about who is Sharon Jameson, and how are you showing up in the world, and what, what, what you're all about. Sure, sure. I am Sherry, first a mom to a 26-year-old son. Let me just say that. I'm also a minister who believes in the power of Jesus and justice. I am an author that writes uh, essays and passages and messages to help people really understand who they are outside of their social conditioning. Because I believe that we are more than we know and that we live as a fraction of who we are. We don't understand how amazing we are based on how God designed us. Uh, I am also a life strategist. I believe that success is a strategy. Happiness is a strategy. And there are ways that we can be in the world and navigate in the world that help us stay grounded and help us bloom versus being in a constant state of chaos. So I help design strategies and approaches that are customized so that people can live full lives based on how they are wired because we are all wired differently. And then I am a speaker. I, I uh, speak at churches, organizations. I speak at any place that needs a word of encouragement, but a word of inspiration. Um, I'm also still in corporate America. I've been in the pharmaceutical industry or the biopharmaceutical industry for over 30 years. And I help navigate some of the economies that require to make the healthcare system work. So I do a lot of things. Um, and it seems like the, those things are very different, but they all really are in the same vein of service, of justice, of compassion. Uh, and also self-love. So I'm grateful to do all those things, and I look forward to doing more as, as God continues to extend my life. So I'm really, really excited about the things that I get to do in the world. And you know, that's exactly, if anyone knows me, they, they know why I love you so much, because we, we just help people so much in, in a lot of the same ways. And I have always resonated with your message from, from day one, which I think was, I don't remember if it was four years ago or whenever it was, the very first time that I heard you speak. And I like bought every one of your books and I did just order your newest book, which I'm gonna have you talk about in just a second. Um, you are an incredible writer. You are an incredible speaker and a, just an amazing human being. And that's what we do here on Outside the Box with Sherry is we do shine a light on people who are making a difference in the world. And obviously you just heard all the different incredible ways that Sharon is impacting the world. So I want you, if you would, just for a second, talk about your new book, why you felt compelled to write it and um, what, that's, what, what, what your intent was for the book. Sure. My newest book is called Deciding to Soar 2, Unwrapping Your Purpose. And that was a really important book to write because after years of coaching thousands of people, what I realized, we all have a purpose. We all have a, a certain combination of gifts and skills and abilities to offer to the world. And that's part of our place in the world. But what happens is that our purpose gets um, buried under our conditioning, it gets buried under our cultural assumptions, um, it gets buried under our childhood wounds that we've never dealt with. Uh, sometimes we don't get to operate fully in our purpose because there are systemic barriers like racism, sexism, um, ageism, abilityism, heterosexism. There's some, some views and some ideologies that shrink us and don't allow us to maneuver in the way that we can do what we have been called to do. So I wanted to write a book to help people understand is that yes, you still have a purpose, irrespective to what you face. But if you look at your life through the lens of purpose, 
it makes those hard experiences, those painful experiences, uh, more understandable because you understand that those experiences came to refine you and to help illuminate your gifts, your wisdom, your courage that you may have never, ever touched on before. So it's important to unwrap your purpose, unwrap the societal shoes and the assumptions to see who you are in all your splendor. Because if you see who you are in all your splendor, that's when you soar. And so it's really important because the world needs us all functioning on all cylinders. And if you look at the state of the world, Sherry, it, you can see that everybody is not functioning to their highest capacity. Because if so, we would not have a, such uh, a, an economy based on greed and guns, uh, inequity and unfairness. If everybody felt as if they had an opportunity to offer their gifts to the world, it would be a more equitable, more humane place to live. And so that's my gift. Let's kind of unwrap ourselves because the world needs us. I need you, Sherry. You need me. And when we put ourselves together in some sense of collective responsibility and some collective care, we both bloom. We both soar. So that's really critical. I love that. I could just sit here and listen to you all day. Well, I probably <laughs> will at some point. I'm sure they'll have some kind of all day seminar, which I will be happy to be attending. Um, and I'm excited because I don't have the book yet, but it is it is on the way. So, and as I said, I've had uh, all your other ones, and I've actually bought a number of other ones that I that I gifted to people on my team. So, um, I, I've always been moved by your message, and I know that you and I have talked a lot about purpose and what that means, and that you're very very passionate about purpose. Now, I do know that because 2021, and as we sit here on the New Year's Eve, the last day of what for some has been just a completely horrifying year, and for some it's been a really blessed year, and it's been, you know, a, a huge uh, difference for a lot of people, like some are great, some hated it, um, going, you know, what I'd like for you to talk about is if you could give some maybe thoughts on 2020 and what maybe people can take out of this sort of tumultuous sort of roller coaster year for a lot of people, what they can take as lessons from this year? Uh, what a great question, Sherry. Something that my parents used to say is that they're always treasure in the midst of trash. And so I don't want to say that 2020 was a lot of trash, but it was a lot of tragedy and tribulation. I, I think 2020 was a year of four key principles for us to all to kind of hold on to. The first principle is to is to get clear about what we want and what we need. I think we for the last decade we were we were caught up in this consumerism and doing more and 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 stretching ourselves and being overwhelmed and being tired and we thought it was a badge to be overextended. We were killing ourselves. And so I think this sacred pause, COVID, slowed us down to really get clear about what we wanted. And we realized we were not even that happy. We were busy, but we were not happy. We were busy, but we were not fulfilled or fruitful. We were just busy. And, and, and it let us understand how, what we, how little really requires this needed to be happy. We don't need the big car, the big house, because some of us lost our titles, but we, didn't, we understood that our jobs and our titles was not our identity. And so I think there was a lot of opportunity to get clear. Now, I'm not going to say it wasn't painful, right? Because surgery is painful. So we had, we got, we, I think there was some spiritual surgery happening for us to get clear on who we are. The second thing I think uh, it taught us is the importance of courage. We did not know what was going on. So we had to be courageous enough to know that whatever came, we can trust ourselves to discern it, but trust ourselves to rebound. And that takes a lot of courage. Um, I think we were asked to activate our courage in a variety of ways. For example, how are we gonna still live in, in, in the midst of COVID? How can we still take care of our families when we lost our jobs? How could we continue to um, teach our kids when there was no school? It took a lot of courage. And courage is always required for creativity. You cannot be, you cannot think outside the box without courage. So we all got courageous. We all got creative. We all uh, got innovative. 
to 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 make make it work. And so I think that's a sign of courage. And it showed us what we were capable of. Because isn't it interesting that you don't know how how creative you are until your back gets um, pushed against the wall? That's right. Right. We all find out we're creative. I think the third thing was commitment. I saw people committed to causes in ways that I've never seen before. Um, for example, racism was always there. But I saw, the, so I saw that brown and black people were committed to it because we had no choice. But the, I saw my white brothers and sisters committed to participating in dismantling unjust systems. I saw protests, black people, white people, brown people, straight people, gay people, able, um, fully able people. I saw old and young working together for justice. Oh, that makes me just get chills. So I saw commitment. Yes, to the common good, to God's good. I saw a common commitment to humanity. I saw people um, have a sense of forgiveness and atonement that I never saw before. And um, so I, I saw a commitment to stay in the course. I know because I saw people, you know, you know, uh, protests, you know, ebbs and flows. But I still see this this commitment, this what I call spiritual stamina to stick and stay until we have resolve. And then I saw the last um, point I saw, I think it really showed that we need each other, that we needed to collectively care for each other and not just care for each other, but care about each other. And um, I saw people reach out to me and care for me in ways I didn't know that I needed to be cared for. Because like you, Sherry, I'm always the strong one. I'm always the one that everybody comes to for support and wisdom. But after I had dealt with 50 to 60 COVID deaths, and I still had to be there for people. I needed people to prop me up so I can continue to serve because I didn't have a chance to opt out, right? As a minister, I didn't have a chance. And I saw people care for me and it let me, and it broke down my barriers because I had this image of myself that I was superwoman. Now I didn't say that, but that's what, how I behaved unconsciously. And to have these people come into my life and say, sweetie, go sit down, go take a rest. It's okay. Um, and I needed somebody to care for me in ways that I could not care for myself. So clarity, courage, commitment, um, this sense of collective um, effort, collective care. Those were the lessons. And I hope we hold on to these lessons because God has a way of uh, making us repeat the lesson if we don't get the lesson. So I hope we get the lesson and hold on to it because I don't want to repeat it too many more times. That's right. Yeah, take a breath, right? <laughs> 2021. Woo! Yay. So, all that just so eloquently put. I love that, Sharon. And, and you're such a master of words. Oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, I think that's an amazing. Um, viewpoint for 2020 and you know 2020 being the year of clarity like everything that you spoke of in those four points all reflect back to being clear and clear about your purpose and and clear on what is and what you are and and things like that so with that being said and all those lessons and those things that we've learned from 2020 no matter how hard they were or how much of a blessing they were. How do you, what do you say to somebody who's sitting here, maybe looking at a blank piece of paper with a goal sheet uh, and thinking about going into 2021? Um, and and they're, they want to pursue that purpose um, that they feel is inside them. Cause this is really part of your mastery is really lighting up and helping people really reach for that purpose. What, what would you, what encouragement would you give to somebody who's sitting there with that blank piece of paper about to step out in courage, you know, towards their purpose, or maybe this is the 2021 is the year that it blooms. What, what advice could you give them? Sherry, you're asking some really good questions. I'm like, oh, that's a great question. I ask, I would say follow your desire. Desire of sire of God. Um, I think that what has happened in the past, we were so busy that we, we forgot how to listen to our desire, to hear what the spirit was telling us. Or we forgot to honor our desire because we wanted to fit into all these boxes that society said were important. 
Right. And so I, I would say follow your desire because your your desire will at least point you to the right direction. It, you might not still go the the exact path, but it'll get you off the couch <laughs> and and to start searching. I, I think it's so important that we are so concerned about making a mistake. Sometimes we're going to make a mistakes because sometimes we are trusting God, but we, we trust God differently based on the different aspects of our lives. And sometimes you got to stretch to step out and say, God, is this you? And if not, trust yourself to rebound and to pivot without guilting and shaming yourself. And those are the key. But I like follow your desire. And the second thing I would say is not after you follow your desire, make a strategy to follow your desire in a way that you are wired. One of the things I used to do, I started this life strategist as a personal trainer. That's how it started. And I realized that you just can't give someone a, just a blanket diet and like go forth and do it. We have to stack the odds in our favor. How do you do that? L listen into your body, understanding your rhythm, understand what type of support you need, and then you customize the approach based on how you win. And that's why I think follow your desire, but follow your desire and also do some self-discovery. Because what happens is we keep trying to follow a map or a course of a framework that might work for 50 people, but it will not work for you. And then when we use somebody else's system on ourselves and we don't get success, we start feeling that we can't do it. And that's not true. You just can't do it how they do it. Everybody learns differently, like our children. Some children are verbal learners. Some are, are visual learners. Some are aesthetic learners. Some are kinetic learners. Understand how you learn and how you lead and how you progress. And so follow your desire, but make a system based on how you're wired. And the third thing I would say, when you get the desire, get help. Oh, I had to learn the hard way. Because we have blind spots that we don't see. Yeah. And in my new book, Sherry, I have a chapter called, it says, it takes an, another set of eyes to rise. Oh, we can't rise by eyes, right? We need someone else to see what we can't see, that, that, and not only see what we don't see. Because if you have had a lot of trauma, trauma hides your truth. So even if you see it, you might not know what you're looking at. Right? So I think those are the things I think is so critical to help people move forward in their purpose so that 2021 can be more aligned with what they feel in their heart and what they believe in their body. So you, I think that we're not going to get whole until our head, our heart, and our hands are moving in the same direction. If our head is over here, our heart is over there, and we're doing something totally different in our hands, that's a schizophrenic, uh, fragmented experience. And you can't make you can't make a progress. You won't get be fruitful. You will just stay frustrated, and frustration it will kill your joy um, more than anything else in the world. So those are the things I would say. And you know what? It'll thwart you from ever standing in your purpose or leading with your passion when you're just stuck in frustration. So, whew, that was a lot. That was like a whole nother book for me. <laughs> I just yeah. absolutely love it. So you wondered. I, I didn't know Sharon Jameson is a life strategist. You absolutely <laughs> watched with us. You absolutely know why um, she has earned that title. And um, she personifies every bit of that. And um, you know what? Here's the thing. If, if, if you are stuck and you're looking at the blank piece of paper and you don't know where to go, how does somebody connect with you um, to maybe, you know, work with you to, to, to fill that page? Yeah, thank you so much, Sherry. You, you're, blessing my, you're blessing my entire whole heart today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, there are very way, ways that you can, um, people can work with me um, because, again, we all learn differently and we all like support differently. So if a, uh, if a person likes one-on-one, -on -one, 
Some people learn that way. I have, they can work with me one-on-one in a VIP situation or an intensive. Some people like group situations because there's, there's a lot of collective wisdom and any companionship, especially in this COVID experience. I, uh, I Dare to Be Me is starting soon, I think in the last week of January, where uh, we work together for six months. I keep my group small on purpose. Um, I think maybe 10 or 15 max for me because the level of intimacy I believe we need um, for transformation um, is critical. I, I think I don't want, I'm not a transactional coach. I'm a transformational coach. So we keep it smaller so we can have input so I can pressure test your perspectives. And then, so it's small enough that people can feel like they can share without judgment. And there's a sense of confidentiality. So that starts um, the third week of January. And um, th- uh, this year, depending upon what happens on COVID, I'm gonna have, I always have uh, relationship intensives. I do a lot of marriage counseling. I don't talk about it a lot, uh, but I, um, I think I'm gonna do one relationship intensive this year that I really, really enjoy. I have a class called the 10 Touchy Topics that derail relationships. And I love to talk about that. And I'm already writing, deciding to soar three. So that might be out by the end of this year. So those are the things that I would love to and invite people to work with me. And um, I I don't know who enjoys it more. <laughs> I don't know if it's my if clients or me, but I love because we are all, we learn from each other. I, I don't have this, um, I don't coach in a way of this hierarchy where I am the best or I am the all wise one. No, we're wiser together. So I have a very collaborative, collective type of approach to how I coach. And I welcome people to work with me in a way that, that works for them. And now you have um, some ways that people connect with you on social media as well. Um, did you want to share the name of your group with our viewers? Sure, sure. Well, everything is Sharon Jamison. Um, I am going to have uh, only one group next year, um, starting January 2nd in two days. Uh, it's all going to be around deciding to soar two. It's going to be, uh, the book is 70 chapters, but they're short chapters. And we're going to take a couple of chapters a week to go through the book. And the reason being, I find that people read books one way, but if there are, uh, if they have uh, ability to glean from somebody else's perspectives, I think that's that's something that will really work. So I'm going to only have that group, uh, and I will have more information uh, about that. Um, but I want to invite people to come to to buy the book. They can buy the book now. They can come to the class on January the second for free. And I'm going to talk about the five lessons that I learned from my elders that will help us reposition and catapult our lives for 2021. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, and we'll post the link and and what's the best way for people, Sharon, to get your book? Is it from your website, Amazon? What, what makes you uh, the happiest for the place for people to go? Obviously they can go to your website. Um, Is it the Jameson group or is it? Yeah, the Jameson group, but they can, the book has its own website so they can go deciding to or they can go to Amazon. Now, if they go to Amazon, fine, just come back to my website and put their uh, receipt number so I can send them a um, a link to the the January the 2nd. So I don't care where they buy the book, just buy the book. Let's talk about it. Um, Because what I find is that People read books. It's kind of like the Bible. You can, I love Bible study because I see one thing, you see another thing, and a third thing sees something. And I think that if we all are going to shift the paradigms that need to be shift post COVID, we need to put our, our minds together. And um, 2021 is, is going to be a challenging year. We all are going to be in some type of recovery recovery from loss of loved ones, recovery of loss of jobs, recovery of loss of different positions. Some people have lost their marriages or they, they had to restructure their marriages, a very high divorce rate. Uh, some people are going to be recovering from a year of isolation. We need each other in 2021. We need to repair. And so I wanted to have a place where people can do that in the midst of safety, in the midst of non-judgment. So I want to invite people. That's going to be open to everybody, but I'm going to be breaking off people in pods so we can talk to each other um, and have some sense of community. 
Oh, I just love that so much, Sharon. And that's, that's what speaks to me with you, with your heart, is you're such a connector. And that was the thing that the word that popped into my head immediately upon meeting you. So, you know, I can't praise you enough, but I'm excited because I'm going to be in that group. Because as I said, the book is on the way. I haven't gotten it yet, but um, it, it is hopefully by Monday or so it will be here, but I'm excited to, to partake in that group with that and learn as I always learn from you. And I'm sure our viewers have learned as well. Um, and remind our viewers again, what the website is for them to connect with you. Yes. Everything is Sharon Jameson. Um, I made it easy, not for you, but for me. <laughs> um, and also for the, uh, you can go get the book from Sharon Jameson, but if not, you can go to, the website deciding to soar.com and you can order the book there. And I hope to see everyone on January the 2nd. And then also I am, if people are interested in me coming to their church, their organization, to their book club, I would love to be invited. And so on my website, there is, um, they can click on, um, uh, and, and, put their information in and I can connect with them because I would love to share, but also I would love for people to also share with me. Oh, and I love that so much. Uh, thank you so much, Sharon, for being my guest today on Outside the Box with Sherry. Uh, if you are an amazing human like Sharon Jamison is, you might be the next guest on Outside the Box with Sherry. Just send me a message at sherry at sherryleopold.com. And what an incredible way to close out 2020 with Outside the Box with Sherry. I wish you the greatest new year. Happy new year. Happy 2021. May you, may it be all you could have ever imagined. And we will see you again in 2021 with Outside the Box with Sherry.